Growing up, I wanted to be the very best, like no one ever was. And if you did too, maybe you were thinking, I want to be a Pokemon master. But Pokemon aren't real, right? Well, kinda. Today we're going over the top five real life Pokemon you can own. My name's Adam, this is Frankie. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. I would like to officially introduce Frankie as the, uh, well, he's not the new co-host, but whenever Diamond needs a day off, he had a spa day today, clipped his nails, unclogged his pores a little bit, so Frankie is gonna take his spot. Plus, who doesn't wanna see banded iguanas? They're kinda cool. Anyway, what we're talking about today is reptiles that look just like Pokemon. The very closest thing you can get to Pokemon that is real, that you can touch, handle, and have in your house. Well, except for the number one. Probably shouldn't have that in your house. Number five. Kecleon? Okay, so I'm old, right? I'm in my early 30s, which means that the first generation of Pokemon are the ones that I know, love, and respect. However, I got in the comments of this video from last time that maybe I should be uh, more open-minded to the new generations, and that's what we're gonna do today. So Kecleon is from the third generation, number 352. So this is a chameleon-like uh, Pokemon, obviously three feet and 48 pounds. So obviously there's no chameleons that get to 48 pounds. However, there are these bad boys right here. These are yellow-lipped Parsons chameleons. These are the ones that we found in Madagascar. Now they're not 48 pounds. However, when I held one on my arm for a little bit too long, these guys feel like they're 48 pounds. In actuality, they might get up to maybe five pounds, something like that. They're the largest chameleon in the entire world. They have those kind of crest-like things on their head and they are a true chameleon. So I think that Parsons Chameleon will make an excellent pet if you are a chameleon enthusiast who loves chameleons, that's your jam, that's what you do, and you're really dedicated because chameleons aren't for most people. However, they are amazing pets. They have these little pincher hands, right? They have a rostral process, which is they, Oh yeah, iguanas just shoot sodium out of their nose. Just, that was in my ear. So they have that <laughs> projection on their nose. They have the crest on their head. They have these beautiful colors. They have these crazy tails, which are prehensile. And their claws, by the way, they feel like vice grips. Not, not quite like the mouth of a monkey tail skink or something like that, but we're talking about when they hold on to you, they hold on to you. They will make you literally bleed if they get you the right way. Now they don't mean to, they're not vicious, and these animals, although they could bite you, the female tried to bite me. I didn't get it on video, but I was trying to take a picture too close and she tried to take a... So just respect these animals and they're gonna respect you too. And I just think they look so much like a living dragon is what we said in the jungles of Madagascar, but really it looks like a Pokemon to me. Number four, we are going deep with this one. We're going all the way to Pokemon 559, that is Scraggy. I had to look this one up. And well, actually what I did is I went on Instagram. If you don't already follow me, please do, really appreciate it. And I asked, hey, what do you guys think is the uh, reptiles that ha look like Pokemon or Pokemon that look like reptiles? And a lot of you said Scraggy, which looks a lot like a leopard gecko. Oh, a little bit overly excited, are we? A leopard gecko wearing pants. So I thought this was hilarious because in the uh, videos that I saw, I just went on YouTube real quick and checked it out. He's always holding up his pants, like he loses his pants, which is hilarious because he also has that tail. And it kind of looks like, well, leopard geckos sometimes will lose their tails. Now, won't they, right? So what that means to me is, well, they have a detachable pant tail, which is kind of like a leopard gecko. They look a lot like a leopard gecko and they're pretty small too. Two feet and 26 pounds. So obviously leopard geckos don't get that big. They're gonna get seven, eight inches, something like that. We've done lots of videos, care guide right here. And they're going to be, well, I don't know, 45 to 80 grams on average, something like that. So definitely not as big at all. However, they are gonna be amazing pets. They're gonna be fantastic in terms of morph. So if you want one that looks just like Scraggy with the oranges and yellows, or if you want one that's almost white and purple, or if you want one that's all black, the Black Knights, Leopard Geckos are just freaking amazing. And because they come in so many morphs and they're so easy to keep, there's one for everybody. Do you wanna spend 25 bucks on a Leopard Gecko? Or do you wanna spend $2,000 on a leopard gecko. You can choose either way. And to set one up is easy because they aren't two feet and 26 pounds. They can be set up in something like, well, minimum 20 gallons. I recommend a little bit bigger. 
and they're going to use all of the space. They look absolutely fantastic. They eat insects. They don't need a lot of humidity. Overall, one of the easiest reptiles to care for. One of my favorites. Leopard geckos are kind of like the real life version of Scraggy. Had to just switch out Frankie momentarily because there was a bit of a mess and that stinks. But you know what doesn't? Me because I have a Scentbird subscription. I was always the guy searching for a signature scent my entire life, trying this cologne and this one, and it took me forever to get through a bottle and they would cost 150, 200, 300 dollars a bottle, but now there's a better solution for that. Scentbird is reimagining how everybody shops, experiences, and discovers personal fragrance. My favorite, Tao Man Chill. This is the one that I like. This is the one that they sent me to try. You go to the website, you fill out a questionnaire with the things that you like, and then they match up a fragrance that's for you. The packaging is absolutely amazing. Convenience and works. And Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance every month for just $17. Every month, you pick what you want and there are no surprises. And the best part is you get a 30 day supply every month. So instead of buying the bottle that's gonna last you forever, that is 150, 300, $500, and you don't even really know if you like it because you only smelled it once in the store. This is the best way to try every single month and find the best one for you before you buy the full bottle. Prada, Gucci, Versace, all the big name brands, and there's indie brands that you might have never heard of also, but you might actually really enjoy and you can discover them through Scentbird. I also got the Tommy Bahama Maritime this month and I really like this one as well. Of course, it's got that amber note in it. There are certain things I would never wear. I don't wanna wear a juniper. I don't wanna smell like a bottle of gin, but because with Scentbird, they send you exactly what you want. They send me things that actually match my personality. So use my code WWR55 for 55% off at scentbird.com. So your first month is just a little bit over $7. You can afford $7 to feel more confident when you leave the house. And it's available in the US and up here in Canada too. I picked the fragrances that I like, the notes that I like, sandalwood, amber, all the masculine things you can imagine, and they sent me the exact matches. What they sent me, I actually really, really love. So go to the link below for 55% off your first month. Thank you, Scentbird, for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to the video. Number three, the most requested one from the last video, Trico, Pokemon 252. So how many were in the second generation? If there's 151 original, like there was less than a, I don't actually care. I'm playing Pokemon Blue on Game Boy Color right now. I'm 106 and I don't care. Now Trico is a dark fighting type. So I was thinking, okay, it looks like a gecko and it's a fighting type. Maybe it's a Toke gecko. But if you look at it, this is a giant day gecko. Now isn't it? This is the one from the Geico commercials. I also realized recently that most people under the age of 25 don't even know the Geico commercials because those are old now. Someone help me! Hello darkness, my old friend. Something interesting is there is a catch rate that you can, I don't know what any of this stuff means, but they're very elusive, I guess, in the game. So 11% catch rate. Giant day geckos are really hard to catch. Now, not only just the look, the fact that they look like one, but the fact that they're hard to catch like one because giant day geckos from Madagascar, these guys have skin that will literally rip off, their tails detach, they're very difficult to catch. In fact, if you watch all the Madagascar videos that I put out or Dion or Mike, you're gonna notice that we never really have any of these in our hands. We have other day geckos that we caught and we could show off, but we never found the Felsuma Grande, or Grandis rather, Grande. Go to Starbucks, can I have a Grande Felsuma? Anyway, you never see these giant day geckos. I have some in my collection, I love them, they're beautiful, but they're not a handleable species. And of course they're not, a f well, they're pretty close to the actual size because it's about a foot long. Trico, and they get to about 10 inches, so pretty darn close. And I'm just basing this on the way it looks. That's it, we can move on. Number two, Dratini. Now Dratini is kind of like, well, it's a dragon, right? Because it morphs into a dragon also, or evolves, I should say, evolves into a dragon. However, it looks to me like an elegant snake that likes water, so therefore, it's an elephant trunk snake right? Okay, I get it. Elephant trunk snakes are ugly little demons or ugly whatever. I think they're cute, okay? I think they're cute. Okay, so I know that Dratini looks a little bit more elegant than an elephant trunk snake, but elephant trunk snakes are just, I mean, if you want an aquatic snake, a fully aquatic snake, I think these are probably the best ones. And we see guys like BMX Johnny and Nerd, and they have great success with them. Now, this is not a species I would necessarily keep, just 
you need it to be a pretty murky water. Well, high tannins, right? So not dirty, just the tannins are high. Uh, you need a lot of cover. They're gonna be hiding a lot. They're gonna be in the water all the time. And then they're not the best for handling. So it's not the greatest pet in terms of just pets in general or pet snakes in general. However, I get a lot of questions. Adam, I want an aquatic snake. This might be the one for you. Now there's a bunch of other ones, tentacle snakes and things like that. Now there are tentacle snakes. I found some in Thailand. I never put that video out. Would you watch that if, if I went in Thailand and just got them out of literally the most polluted water I've ever seen? Would you, anyway, hit the like button and let me know in the comments. Either way, I think that elephant trunk snakes are just better all the way around. No, they're not as pretty. They're not as beautiful. They don't have wings on their heads. They're not five foot 11 and how many pounds was she? 7.73 pounds. So yeah, I mean, we're kind of stretching here, but I wanted to show these guys off. I just think that they're really beautiful. Number one, the one that's probably not gonna be a good pet, but you could technically have in some places, and one that has to be on the list, Arbok. In Arbok, obviously, is a cobra, right? Okay, so let's do this. I don't wanna just promote getting cobras as pets. So, you could have a cobra, right? Or we could compare it to a cobra, because realistically, Arbok is a cobra, that's what it is, right? Probably a monocled cobra, maybe even a king cobra, which I've found in the wild, they're amazing, king cobras anyway. Never found a monocle. I found a spitting cobra too. I've never thought that I'd be able to see a cobra so close. Whoa, 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 Adam. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. But I don't think those are the greatest pets for 99.9% .9 of people. However, you know what it is? Hognosnakes. Hognosnakes come in a bunch of morphs. They kind of act like cobras in that they kind of puff up. They have really cool faces. And I actually had a hognosnake named Arbok. I have one named Ekans. This is Ekans, right? And I had one named Arbok. And Arbok is the dad of quite a few of the babies that I've sold since, right? So I've actually produced these guys, Ekans and Arbok together. However, Arbok unfortunately passed. He was really old when I got him. I think he was like 2009 or something and I got him in 2015 he bred a couple of times and that was it so RIP Arbok but I just think that hognose snakes are I mean they're a reasonable pet for most people they're rear fang venomous so technically still venomous because Arbok is a poison type right and Arbok is 11 foot 6 so that fits right along with a king cobra king cobras can get up to 12 feet uh, but they don't get to 147 pounds so I mean let's go 1.43 pounds which is basically as big as a female hognose would get maybe a little bit more but either way i love these guys i love hognose snakes that's the logo like literally my brand logo wwr logo is a hognose snake so and can we just give a round of applause in the comment section for how amazing mr uh fiji bandit iguana here is frankie he, he did really good today we're taming him out and in the comment section please let me know i would love to hear from you is there gonna be a part three what do you think is a perfect match a pokemon that looks like a reptile or reptile that looks like a pokemon let me know in the comment section as always thanks for hitting like and subscribe it helps this channel so much when you do and a special thanks to the patreon supporters you guys get videos early extra videos discounts if i do put that video about the tentacle snakes We'll put that out first on Patreon. All of that and more for as little as a dollar a month. And that's it. So go to the link below for 55% off your first month. Thank you, Scentbird, for sponsoring today's video. Because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you in the next one.